In this lesson, we will talk about isotopes. Our learning targets for today include being able to differentiate between isotopes of a given element, being able to write the name and write the symbol of a given isotope using the mass number, and being able to determine the number of protons and neutrons in a given isotope. Let's begin by taking a look at these three pictures of atoms. See if you can get your periodic table and determine what atom is pictured here. Hopefully you're noticing the capital letter C shown in each of these pictures. C stands for carbon. And sure enough, if you look at carbon on the periodic table, its atomic number is six. So that's shown right here. Another way to tell that this is carbon is by looking at the number of protons. The number of protons matches the atomic number for an element. All of these atoms have an atomic number of six or six protons in their nucleus. And so how do we know that they're atoms? Well, atoms of a particular element are neutral. And we know that they're neutral because they will have the same number of protons as they do electrons. In these pictures though, you'll notice that the neutrons is what varies in number. So the first picture has six neutrons, the second picture has seven neutrons, and the third picture has eight neutrons. So that's one characteristic of an isotope. Let's take a look at another representation of the same isotopes. So how do I know that they're the same? Well, if you look at the proton number, once again, we have six protons in each of these pictures. So that's how I know that this is still carbon. If you take a look at the number of neutrons shown in blue, and count up the neutrons, we've got six neutrons in the first picture, seven neutrons in the second, and eight neutrons in the third. So when you're looking at isotopes, the definition of an isotope is when you have an atom of the same element, but each of the atoms has a different number of neutrons. So we call that an isotope. Not only do isotopes differ in their number of neutrons, but because of that, they also differ in their mass. And if you recall um, how to calculate mass, you, you would need to add the number of protons plus neutrons to get the mass number. Okay, notice that the electrons are also the same. The electrons are what have to do with chemical reactivity, and we will cover that in a future unit. The number of protons and neutrons has nothing to do with chemical reactivity. So even though isotopes differ in their mass number and differ in the number of neutrons, they will still have the same chemical reactivity, just not the same nuclear reactivity. So just remember, mass number equals protons, which is also known as the atomic number, plus the number of neutrons. What we The subatomic particle that we disregard is the number of electrons. The electrons, remember, are 1,800 times smaller than a proton or neutron, and so for that reason, their mass is too small to include in calculations. So how do we determine the mass of each of these isotopes? Well, you would have to add the protons and neutrons. So in the first picture with the six protons and the six neutrons, if you add those up, that gives you a mass number of 12. So the isotope in the first picture right here, this one is called carbon 12. In the next picture, you've got six protons and seven neutrons for a total of 13. So the second picture is known as carbon 13. And finally, in the last picture, we have six protons and seven neutrons. Adding that up together gives us a total of 14. So the final picture is known as carbon 14. Remember, this dash in the middle of carbon and 14 in, in that phrase, that is just a hyphen. It is not a negative symbol. So just remember, that is a dash connecting the, two wor the, the word and the number together. Here's another representation of those same isotopes. Remember the top, those are the isotope names. What's different about this picture is that you can't see the electrons. The electrons are just in the electron cloud. So I just wanna show you different representations of how you may see atoms pictured. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at how to write the symbol for an isotope. We also call that nuclear notation because we're taking into account 
anything that's present in the nucleus in terms of protons and neutrons. So let's take carbon-12 as our example. The symbol for carbon-12 is carbon, is, is C, capital C for carbon, and then you would have numbers to the left of it. Can you tell what those numbers represent by looking at the data for carbon-12? The number at the top is the mass number, and the number at the bottom is the number of protons or the atomic number. So remember, to calculate the number of neutrons, all you would need to do is subtract 12 minus 6. So 12 minus 6 protons would give us 6 neutrons. And that's how you can calculate the number of neutrons given mass number and proton number. Let's practice together. See if you can figure out how to write the nuclear symbols or nuclear notation for carbon-13 and carbon-14. So hopefully you remember that the symbol for carbon is C, so we can go ahead and put that in both of these boxes. The number 13 is the mass number, and that's going to go up at the top. The number 14 is also the mass number for this isotope, so we'll put that at the top here. And the number at the bottom should be the number of protons or the atomic number for carbon. Carbons, protons will always be the same, no matter what the number of neutrons or even electrons is. This number will always be the same. So these are the symbols for these isotopes. All right, let's do some practice together. So go ahead and get your periodic table out. Make sure you have that handy so we can fill in this table together. Take a look at your periodic table and see what element has atomic number 17. Hopefully you can see that it is the element chlorine. Now, if the atomic number of chlorine is 17, that also means it has 17 protons. Notice that now we're asked for neutrons. So remember this relationship up at the top. That to get the mass number, you must add the protons and neutrons. So just rearrange the variables here. To get the neutrons, all we have to do is subtract the mass number and the protons, and we will get the neutrons. So 35 minus 17 is 18. Now for the isotope name. Remember, the isotope name is simply the name of the element, so in this case it's chlorine, dash the mass number, which is 35. And then we're going to write the isotope symbol. So the symbol for chlorine is Cl. The number 35, which represents the mass number, goes up at the top. And 17, which is the atomic number, goes at the bottom. And that is the isotope symbol for chlorine 35. Now see if you can find aluminum. Aluminum's atomic number is 13. Its proton number is also 13. This time we're given the neutrons. So to get the mass number, all you have to do is add the protons plus the neutrons. And that should give you 27 as the mass number. The isotope name then is aluminum dash 27, representing the mass number. And the symbol is aluminum with a 27 up at the top, representing the mass number, and 13 at the bottom, representing the atomic number. Finally, we have carbon-14. So the symbol for carbon is just capital C, and its atomic number is 6. Its proton number is also 6. This time, in the name, we're given the mass number, so we can use that to fill in the mass number blank. So that's 14. To find the neutrons, remember all you have to do is subtract. 14 minus 6 is going to give you 8 neutrons. And when we write the symbol, it would just be carbon with a 14 representing the mass number at the top and a 6 representing the atomic number at the bottom. Let's try a few more examples. So here we have the element sodium, Na. 
atomic number 11. Remember, the number at the bottom here is the atomic number or the number of protons. So we're going to go ahead and fill that in. And the number of protons we can also fill in. And then the number at the top represents the mass number. So all you have to do is copy that in there, 23. To find the neutrons, remember, subtract the mass number minus the protons to get the neutrons. So 23 minus 11, that will give you 12 for the neutrons. Notice that there is no charge on the sodium isotope. There's no positive or negative symbol there. So we can take that and un to understand that the number of protons, positively charged particles, will equal the number of electrons, negatively charged particles. So there's a reminder here for you. So if we have 11 protons, we're gonna have 11 electrons. Now let's take a look at cobalt. See if you can find its atomic number on the periodic table. Cobalt's atomic number is 27. So that also means it has 27 protons. The 60 tells us that 60 is the mass number. And then to find the neutrons, all you have to do is subtract 60 minus 27. And that will give you 33 neutrons. And then finally, we're at electrons. So once again, there is no negative symbol here. This dash right here, this is just a dash. It's not a negative sign. So we take this to understand that this is a neutral isotope of cobalt and it's gonna have the same number of electrons as it does protons. So we can go ahead and put 27 in this spot as well. Next we have uranium. The atomic number for uranium is given to us down here at the bottom, 92. And that is also the number of protons. We can go ahead and notice that because there's no charge, no positive or negative symbol on the uranium, that this is also means 92 electrons. The mass number is given to us at the top, 238. And to find the neutrons, all we need to do is subtract 238 minus 92. And that'll give us 146 neutrons. Finally, let's take a look at iodine-131. So take a moment and find that on your periodic table. Iodine's atomic number is 53. That means it also has 53 protons, and because there is no positive or negative symbol on the iodine, we understand that to mean that it also has 53 electrons. The 131 right there represents the mass number of this isotope. So you're gonna go ahead and write 131 in that spot. To find the neutrons, all you do is subtract 131 minus 53, and that will give us 78 neutrons. And that's it for isotopes.